Today, I have a fresh cup of coffee and my new cup that uh, the wife bought me for Christmas. Have you seen my wiener? <laughs> the, uh, we used to have wiener dogs, so uh, she bought me this. She saw it in a uh, coffee shop and said, you have to have that. I don't have an untango cup. Maybe I'll have to bake one or something, but yeah. Fresh cup of coffee, new video, and uh, 170 subscribers. Pretty happy with that, guys. Thank you. I'm, I'm growing. I just got to keep pushing out more content. Mm. So, today's video is about this little guy. This is a Pi Zero. It is a it is configured for a pie hole. I, uh, a friend of mine has a couple of these and he gave me one of these pie hats, as you can see here. I don't know if this is going to focus, but yeah, there it is. It's got an ethernet port on it. Normally these don't have ethernet ports, but this one does. So I've installed pie hole on this. And for the last couple months, uh, I've been figuring, trying to figure out how to get pie hole working on multiple networks. On the single network, it's fine, but I got four networks where maybe I got three networks on this setup here. We have the main network, we have the guest network, and then we have an IoT network. Well, technically the IoT network doesn't need a pie hole for ads and stuff like that, but I wanted to challenge myself to make it work over uh, all of the uh, subnets and stuff like that. And I couldn't figure it out and I started reading and playing and tinkering and playing and got it working. So today I'm going to show you guys how I got it working successfully. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in and let it boot. Uh, I've already pre-configured this. It's got um, Raspberry Pi with no graphical display on it and just Pi hole basic setup. There's no, there's no extra um, lists or anything like that in there. It's just Pi hole and it runs and it's got a static IP address of 192.168.8.4. You'll see that in the video here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into the switch over there. And uh, once that's, I'm going to show you what it looks like before and after, and then I'm going to go through the config um, on Untangle how to get that working. So let's plug this in. Let's roll over to my little rack over here. It's booting. So anyways, I'm going to break up Internet Explorer and show you guys what it looks like with and without Piehole. So um, Piehole, we want to go speedtest.net use speed test as a good example because I do speed tests from here all the time and all the ads show up this is like ugh, I hate surfing the internet for so many ads this used to work really good with YouTube but they've fixed that so you can't use that uh, so let's see if we can ping the pie hole first and then I'll I'll do a, a quick hard test but then I'll show you an untangle how to make it so it's all automatic uh, ping 192.168.8.4 It's up and running. So let's see if we can get to it. We'll use Internet Explorer Probably still booting. Nope, it's there. Okay Yeah, it's definitely booting because you've got the little spinning circle here There we go, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to force the network card that's built in to that ad address right here. So we'll go network connections and then we'll do the spe same speed test and see if it works. See, because you know, with my luck, it always shows others. So we'll go main 5G. We'll go back to here. Where is my, this one? We'll force it to 192.168.8.4. We'll go OK. Let's use this browser. Well, actually, we'll use Internet Explorer just to prove that it's working first. Uh, Speedtest.net. No more ads. Isn't that nice? Yes. Let's do a speed test. How fast are we getting today? The site's always slow. I don't know why. We are getting 900 
Yeah? Yep. Almost our full gigabit connection. Anyways, as you can see, it's working and there's lists you can get and stuff like that, but be careful because if you put too many lists in there, then you'll have the wife banging on the uh, door in your room there going, hey, I can't get to a website and I'm trying to buy something and it says it's blocked or something. So be careful. So let's close that. I'll log into Untangle and I'll show you what I've done. Oh, we don't want to go here. We want to go do local. 192, type it first, 192.168.8.1. So first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to enable it on all the interfaces and set that. So let's go config, network, internal, we'll go like this, DHCP, we'll go DNS override and we'll type in our IP address for the Pi hole, 192.168.8.4. We'll push done, save. As it's saving, it takes a couple seconds. We'll go back to network connections Ethernet, change after, properties, we'll go back to here, obtain, close that. Now if I unplug the cable, we'll see it go away. And then we'll come back. Just to double check that we got our, our DNS and it's working. Okay, we're back and we'll go IP config slash all. And we'll see that our DNS is right there. Okay, so it's doing it. It's automatically doing it. So now when you connect to your main network, it's automatically doing that and it's working for you. Now we want to do it. We want to set that for the IoT. And I think I have it set automatically. Yeah, I just didn't turn it off on the IoT. And is it turned on for the guest? Yes. Uh, GCP. Yep, it's automatically doing it. Now, I have a lot of rules in here that make it so guest and IOT can't get to the main network. If you have those rules, then it can't see DNS. You have to make special exceptions. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's save this. First, I'm gonna show you my bypass rule, or my, 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 my bypass, but my um, block rule for IOT and um, guest, so they can't get to the web interface. Because if you are a guest and you connect to the network and you do your IP config, you'll figure out, oh, hey, it's got a firewall. I can maybe get into the firewall and disable these features or get around it, but you can't. So uh, I've made a rule. So we go to advanced and it's under access rules. And I've got a access rule right here that says block IOT admin. Actually, I should change it to IOT and guest just so I know. I always try to label everything so I know when I'm looking for issues and I have issues, I know what rule I'm going to, right? And you can see here the source interface is IoT and guest, and we're blocking the destination address where the main DNS is coming from, so 8.4, but I'm gonna make it so it's 8.1. So this allows you to not get to the webmin interface, and we're blocking 80 and 443. And I'll show you it working, because I do this a lot. So what I do is I push done. It's already enabled. D IPv6 is already enabled on there. I mean, I don't use anything. So now what we'll do is we'll click block, save it. That's the first thing I do. So that way nobody can get to the uh, Untangle firewall. I mean, they need the password to get in. And when you get to that stage, you'll get to a page that says, you can try to log in and it says administrators disabled this, but I make it so nobody can even get to the page. Just why, why, why let them, right? And Sky Knight said on the um, form there, that's not a good idea, but I've been doing this for a year and never had a problem. So if somebody wants to prove me wrong, let's do it. Anyways, let's go back to NAT rules. We have to make a NAT rule so the DNS is properly working. So I have one here. I'll show you how it's made. Uh, we just click on add and then we, I called it pie hole. And then we enable it. And this is what I did. So destination port is 53 DNS. Destination interfaces are internal IOT and guest. And then I left it as auto. Then I click done. Okay. Save. This takes a couple seconds because it's doing its thing. And then I have a filter rule. Here are my filter rules. They're disabled right now because I wanted to show you guys things working. So I have the first one 
is this one right here. We have block IoT from web and LAN. Well, this one doesn't even work, so let's delete that. I'm not even going to enable that because it doesn't work because I did that in access rule. The second one is uh, allow IoT and DNS. So we want to allow the DNS port from source to the destination. So source is IoT and guest. We want to allow those two subnets and whatever else you want to allow to destination port 53 DNS to destination interface, the internal, because the pie hole is living on the internal of the DNS, okay? Or on the DNS network, sorry. And we want to pass that. So we want to push done and we want to enable this because we want to allow that. We're not blocking it. We're allowing that network to come through. So we got to tell it. And then I have another one. Block IoT and LAN, uh, by IoT and guest, actually. I forgot the guest part. Sometimes I get lazy. So on this one, we have source, IoT and guest, and then the destination is internal. We don't want anybody getting to the internal. Now, sometimes you could have maybe your admin network or something like that. You want to block that too because you don't want people having access. Depends on how big your network is. And then we block this. So we don't click down here, we can click pass or block. Mine's blocked. And I have the service protocols as TCP, UDP, and ICMP. So that means they can't ping across it and they can't get to the device and start snooping. So we push done and we're gonna enable that. Save. I should check to see if my recorder's recording, make sure. Yep, it is, good. I'd hate to do my video and nothing's recording and then I'd be upset. So. We've got all those rules in there. Um, let me just see here. We got interfaces, we got the two, we got those working, and we're gonna close this. So the first thing I wanna do then is I'm gonna unplug my um, network cable dongle, and I'm gonna connect to the uh, IoT network, and then we're gonna try to get to the network uh, in min phase, it's gonna block but I'm gonna show you that's still working the internet and the DNS is still coming through. So let's close this browser. Let's unplug this cable. We will connect to Wi-Fi and then tell it to connect to, where's IOT? It's a big list because I got lots of stuff in this neighborhood. Where is it? Let's wait a second. Oh, there it is. IoT is this network. We'll connect. We're connected. We got network connection down here, so it's working. Let's check the IP address. IP config. We got 10 address. Let's do IP config slash all so we can see that we're getting our proper DNS. We're getting our DNS. Why didn't it show me? Am I blind? Nope, it's right there, just scrolling too much. So we got our DNS from the other network and we're online. So let's go to our browser and let's go to say, um, what a website we can go to? Apple.ca. <laughs> we're surfing, it's working, right? Now let's try to get to our admin page since we're gonna pretend to be somebody we're not supposed to be. And we'll go HTTPS 192.168.0. Eight, oh, one six eight eight dot one. Can't get to it. It's good. So that's another thing. Now let's go to um, speed test. See if the ads are popping up. No ads. That's working too. So let's go to go and do a speed test. As it's doing that, I need a cup of coffee. We're on Wi-Fi, five gigahertz, so the speed test is not gonna be as much as an ethernet cable, but the point of this is to show you that it's all working, not to show you how fast Wi-Fi is. So that's working, right? I mean, I spent hours playing with this and learning it, and then I had to realize I learned stuff. So that is pretty sweet. So now, if you have a pie hole and you want to, actually, I wonder if we can get to the pie hole. I can't remember if I blocked that or not. 192.168.4 slash admin? Probably not, because I blocked that subnet. Yeah, you can't get to that, so I blocked that whole subnet. 
If we wanted to, we could uh, connect back to the Ethernet cable here. Let's just see if our stats are going up on the uh, Pi hole from the proper network. Uh, here we go. Let's go 192.168.8.4 slash admin. I don't think I'm going to do an, uh, a pie hole video because there's just no point. I don't even know if I have the right password for this. Nope. It is... Um, I don't even know where I wrote that down. I can't remember. I guess if we want, we could uh, remote to it and reset it because the instructions are right there. So 192.168.8.4. Yep, we want to go pi. I know the other passwords though. It's not the fastest device, but it does work great. Now my home network, when I have pi hole, I've virtualized on my server in the basement and now yeah, works great. So we should go sudo pi hole dash a dash p. Enter new password. Done. That was easy. <laughs> That's what she said. There we go. There's all our stats. It's working. So I'm not going to go over how to use Pi Hole, maybe in another video, but for today, the main video was to show you guys that you can have one Pi Hole and it serve the whole network and it works great. So, I sip another sip of my coffee. Thank you to all my subscribers and um, I do have a Patreon account. I, I don't know if it's worth telling you guys that I have it, but I do have a link down below if you want to subscribe and help me out. Um, I'm hoping to get some more equipment. There's a box right here that I'm gonna be unboxing in a couple days that Untangle sent me. Thank you very much, yes. Can't wait to start playing with that little device. And um, yeah, thank you very much for subscribing. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, jason at jasonslab.ca. Uh, I'll put that in the, in the video below here also. And I'll put it into the description so you guys can click on it and just email me. I'm getting emails, people are emailing me, so I'm helping people out and uh, yeah, so you guys have a great day. I'm going to finish my coffee, and uh, yeah, I might go open that box up and have a look at the new device. So you guys have a great day. Talk to you later.